Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. Police are now seeking witnesses to Sunday's street brawl between James Packer and Nine CEO David Gingell. Gingell has taken the blame for starting the Bondi punch-up, which left Australia's richest man with a blackened left eye. Neither man has lodged an official complaint. This morning, police launched an investigation into the brutish fist fight. This video shows the pair wrestling on the ground with three men trying to separate them. Mr Gingell apparently confronted Mr Packer as he arrived at his luxury Bondi home and things quickly ignited from there. The photos, which News Corp reportedly purchased for $200,000, show both looking unkept and unruly as months of verbal sparring came to a head. Commentators say neither man came out winners. This was more like a Raging Bull versus uh, Bruce <laughs> Lee, I think. Uh, that raw aggression and the anger that is spilling out of both men as they basically beat the hell out of each other, it, it really is a shocking sight. This Channel 9 van, parked near Packer's luxury Bondi unit, apparently triggered the punch-up. Cameraman Nick Tokic had parked there because it was close to his home. He later posted on Facebook, Oopsie Daisy. Today, neither James Packer nor his mother Roz looked particularly happy. The billionaire was sporting a nasty shiner and facing a slew of tabloid headlines around the country. Police are urging anyone with images or footage of the brawl to come forward. Brooke Holdsworth, QUT News. Two hospital chiefs have been sacked over a series of surgical errors at Rockhampton Base Hospital. The repeat errors by an overseas trained doctor echo the notorious Giant Patel controversy. State Parliament sat for the first time today in over a month and the Minister for Health wasted no time, dropping a bombshell. An independent inquiry convened under the Hospital and Health Boards Act will investigate four cases involving the same surgeon stretching back to 2011. The cases are all from Rockhampton-based hospital. Health authorities say the most serious medical botch saw a patient's artery nicked during surgery. The patient lost massive amounts of blood and was urgently transported to Brisbane for treatment. Another involved removing a patient's healthy right kidney instead of the diseased left one. The unnamed surgeon has been banned from operating at the hospital. A senior staffer has been sacked and another stepped down. Just as Bundaberg's Dr Death Saga appeared to be in the rear vision mirror, this latest suspect surgeon has opened another wound in Queensland's regional hospitals. Rockhampton's health department is now under immense scrutiny and the city's MP wants answers. This goes much further than simply saying that it's a single error of a single surgeon in a, in a, in a single situation. This is systemic issues and that really red flags for me. And Queensland's top health bureaucrat agrees. I'm keen to get results as quickly as possible because if there are changes that need to be made on a local level or changes that need to be made system-wide, uh, the earlier we become aware of those changes, the better. There are now three separate investigations to find out how the surgical mistakes were made and missed. Mackenzie Lyon, QUT News. Student protesters interrupted a live TV program last night to voice their concerns with the Coalition's performance. Adding to the Abbott government's woes, the latest news poll shows just how unsatisfied Australians are. Education Minister Christopher Pine isn't popular with students opposed to his higher education reform. On the ABC's Q&A program, a group of university students calling themselves the Socialist Alternative hijacked the show. Pine laughed off the disruption. Does this mean you won't have me again? <laughs> but the students caused such a ruckus that the program was temporarily pulled from air. The dissatisfaction doesn't end with the Education Minister. The latest news poll shows support for the Coalition plunging to its lowest level in almost four years. It's the largest single fall for a government since Julia Gillard announced the carbon tax in February 2011. It's not welcome news as the government prepares to announce the 2015 budget on Tuesday. Opposition leader Bill Shorten is creeping up on Mr Abbott's lead as preferred Prime Minister 
as satisfaction with Mr Abbott's performance drops five points. The poll shows a dive in support for the coalition, with the primary vote at 34%, while Labor scored an eight-point turnaround in the two-party preferred poll, bringing them up to 53%. The government is yet to confirm whether the deficit levy will be included in the budget, with Mr Abbott facing accusations of broken promises if it goes ahead. Olivia Rogers, QUT News. Brisbane's drinking culture was under the spotlight today at an annual Liquor Accords conference. The state government is drafting a safe night out strategy to improve safety around the city's nightlife hubs. Brisbane's nightlife is under the microscope and close supervision. Bad behaviour is increasing in licensed areas and business owners are fed up. Today's Liquor Accord conference was told the city's nightlife is at risk. The state government is promoting safety in nightlife precincts with the safe night out strategy, targeting disruptive behaviour and pre-drinking. It aims to stop mindless violence pouring out onto the streets. People get into arguments, they sometimes get into fights, sometimes we see extreme violence. The strategy will highlight changes in laws and penalties. Currently one in five hospitalisations in Australia is due to alcohol and an average of 33 arrests are made each weekend in Fortitude Valley. The call for a safe night out strategy and changes to liquor licensing is purely to promote a safer Brisbane nightlife. But it's a double-edged sword. With changes to licensees and the Liquor Act, small businesses may suffer. Nick Braben had this happen to his bar. Businesses will invariably close because of uh, a change in, in structure, but the community will suffer effects, I think, because, uh, you know, um, places like Fortitude Valley will become less, uh, less popular. The Safe Night Out strategy is currently open for public comment. Gabrielle Lyons, QUT News. Despite the cooler weather, the heat was on in the CBD this afternoon. A sea of Brisbane Raw fans turned out to congratulate their new A-League champions. Players soaked up the celebration and the orange ticker tape parade. Hundreds of people lined Queen Street Mall as victorious Raw players made their way to King George Square. Bright faces cheered as the players rode a fleet of Mercedes through the crowd. They've done so much for us all year. The least we could do was come here and, and support them back. Every minute was suspenseful and exciting. Yeah. They seem to do this to us every time, like coming back from behind to winning a grand final. It's sort of part of what it is now, so we're sort of used to it. With the support of an Orange Army, the three-time A-League champs haven't stopped partying since their 2-1 victory against the Wanderers on Sunday night. It's just the icing. It's, um, it's the part that we can really enjoy. It's, um, we've earned this. Despite the day's infectious celebration, it's a suitable farewell to the star striker, Bazaar Barisha. The most what they're going to miss is the, the peoples in Queensland, you know, very nice people. They already told me that they're going to gonna play very dirty to me when I come back. Both Mayor Graham Quirk and Premier Campbell Newman were sad to say goodbye, wishing him the best in Melbourne. With the A-League soccer season now over, fans are left to wait in anticipation for the next season. Elizabeth Lambert, QUT News. Jack Viney is fronting the AFL tribunal after his high bump left Adelaide's Tom Lynch with a broken jaw. Lynch could be off the field for up to six weeks. This is the collision that could also see Viney sidelined for weeks. He was referred straight to the tribunal by the match review panel. Wayne Carey says the bump, although unintentional, could result in a tough penalty for the second year demon. He hasn't gone in there trying to no. hit him in the head, but the fact that he has and the end result's a broken jaw, um, he's in some real trouble. And Tigers star Brett Delidio is challenging a one-match ban for striking, following his scuffle with Cats player Matthew Stokes. Sydney Swans star recruit Lance Buddy Franklin will again have all eyes on him as speculation arises over whether he will play in Friday's blockbuster against his old team Hawthorne. Franklin injured his knee two weeks ago. Hawthorne coach um, Alistair Clarkson yeah, says he now, so doesn't expect to see Franklin answer. on the field. Cameron Kirby, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. It was a cool start today for Brisbane, warming up to clear blue skies throughout the River City. Looking around the southeast, clear skies on the sunny coast, with a top of 23, while the Gold Coast and Ipswich both saw a bit of cloud cover. If you're travelling interstate tomorrow, Sydney can expect a shower or two and a max of 19. Chilly in our national capital with a top of 15. Possible morning showers in Melbourne and Hobart and Darwin a sunny 32. 
The forecast for Queensland, warm in Mount Isa and Cairns tomorrow, both with tops of 29. Partly cloudy in Mackay, Rocky and Bundaberg, 24 the maximum in those centres. And sunny and warm in Longreach. The outlook for Brisbane. Late showers expected tomorrow, a top of 23. Then showers continue right through till Friday. And that brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QT News. Goodbye. Goodbye.